whether we came ashore walking or if we were carried on stretchers, one thought was uppermost in our minds. We were on our way home. When our founders were injured in the Second World War and came back to Canada with spinal cord injuries, they were not accepted in society. People who had disabilities, or particularly a spinal cord injury from the Second World War, were living in hospital for the rest of their lives. And our founders found that to be unacceptable and built a coalition which eventually formed an organization called the Canadian Paraplegic Association, which we now know as Spinal Cord Injury Ontario, as well as Spinal Cord Injury Canada, in association with a federation across Canada. First of all, they bought a house and converted it into a rehab center. They worked as a community to ensure that there was companies donating free wheelchairs to whoever needed them. You know, back then, the lifespan of a person with a quadriplegia could be only six months based on some of the Euro health technologies like catheters that were not available back then. And people were dying of kidney failures and liver failures. And we did not have a clear understanding on how to support a neurogenic bladder, for example. And then they pushed forward and built the first spinal cord injury rehabilitation center in Canada. And to this very day, it's still considered the largest spinal cord injury center in Canada. One person that is always dear to my heart was Ken Langford, World War II veteran injured with a spinal cord injury and the first executive director of the Canadian Paraplegic Association. He was an inspiring man that would never take no for an answer. And one of the most memorable things that I always used, had the privilege of doing when he was alive was actually go to his house um, and have sherry at 12 o'clock in the afternoon because that's the way he wanted it. He was a very relentless man. He had a solution for everything. He would never present barriers without a plan to tackle the problem. And he was a man that was very respected for that. I think he just inspired everybody around him and inspired people to build a charity together with him and raise money and supports and funds to continue the push to keep people independent, self-reliant, and have full community participation how they want it. This philosophy we carry in almost everything we do. We take the lived experience of the individual with a spinal cord injury extremely serious, and we believe strongly that that voice and that experience that a person has by living a spinal cord injury every day is equally as important as the science and the clinical training that a person receives to be a professional in the space of spinal cord injury. So that recognition and that collaboration collectively, I think is the philosophy that was inspired by our founders and how we move forward today to make the progress that we've achieved and the progress of which we want to go to make things even stronger and equitable in this province and country. Mm -hmm.